Alright guys, today we're going to install a Wi-Fi card to my PC and we're going to see how big of a difference the new Wi-Fi cards are compared to Ethernet. As you can see, I have an Ethernet cable running all the way over there and I kind of don't want that Ethernet cable running all around my house and I kind of do want to be able to move my PC around and I feel like I'm kind of stuck in certain locations just because of the fact that I have to have an Ethernet cable plugged in. So with that said, I'll show you guys this right here. So I bought this off of Amazon. It's the AX3000 by TP-Link. It's a Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.2 PCI adapter. And it's rated for, it's basically supposed to be fast, essentially. And it's Bluetooth compatible, so we're gonna go ahead and, and see how big of a difference a PCIe Wi-Fi card makes compared to Ethernet. So we're gonna put this to the test against Ethernet. Obviously, Ethernet's gonna win, but I'm kind of curious on how big the difference or the gap is between Ethernet and a Wi-Fi card. So let's go ahead and uh, test it on here and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so these are our results on Ethernet. Now let's go ahead and try that with the Wi-Fi card after we install it. So we're gonna move this computer, we're gonna take it off and put it on the table over there. And then from there, we can go ahead and do everything we need to do. Oh, oh my gosh, the PC is super heavy. It looks like we have space. Oh, we're gonna put, see if we can put it in right there. I don't know if you guys can see, maybe it fits underneath there. I don't know if it's gonna generate any extra heat, but uh, yeah, so we'll see. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and open it and see, you know, just go. And I'm gonna cut it right here. So here we have the TP link. Let's go ahead and open it. It opens up from here. So we're gonna go and kind of open it from the bottom. That's pretty cool. You guys see that? We get the Wi-Fi card and then the two antennas. Let me let me give you an example of how they go. You see? You guys see this antenna, bro? See this antenna? This antenna is one thick boy. It's really thick. Let me give you two of them right here. You guys see? Two antennas. Remove the screw on. Pretty cool. And then here's the here's the PCI D card. It's the Wi-Fi card. This is the Wi-Fi card. Just just goes in like this and just goes psh, plugged into the PC right there. Doesn't look too crazy. It looks pretty simple. It has Bluetooth too. So if you need Bluetooth, you can go ahead and get Bluetooth with this. Really cool. You plug it in. It just takes up two first. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, peel that off. It looks satisfying. And then this is the, this is how you can get Bluetooth. I would just like to state that I think it's easier to plug this in before you even install the Wi-Fi card because trying to plug it in after you've installed the Wi-Fi card underneath the GPU and whatever other PCI Express devices you have, it's gonna make the process very tedious and very difficult. So I highly recommend plugging in that cable from the very beginning and then plugging it into the PCIe slot. So um, as for install, it's pretty much just plug and play. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna have to remove, we're gonna have to remove this, this piece right here. We kind of set that aside. And we're just gonna go in and install that. That's good. And those that are wondering, the box does include a smaller bracket for small form factor PCs, as well as a disc for driver installation, which is a great add-on even in today's standards because some people are still upgrading their older systems, which I find really handy. The install, these right here, just uh, you just take this end and then screw it, screw it on top of those. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and just hook it on top. And as you can see, you just screw it righty tight like that. Get on top and we twist it righty tighty. Okay. Also, don't forget to remove the plastic because I kind of forgot and I had to remove it later. So, I mean, it looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. You just, you guys see, and then you can, um, you can bend it, you can bend the other one as well. And they move like that. You can move these. Really cool. We're just gonna have to go ahead and test it when, we're gonna have to go ahead and test it. 
Pretty cool. You guys can see. So after installing the Wi-Fi card, I found that it's I forgot really to plug in the Bluetooth cable. Here. Now to plug in the Bluetooth cable, it's pretty easy. There's two ends to the cable. The first end, this one that you see here, this one is the USB header cable, I believe is what it's called. And this one goes plugged into the motherboard. And then the white end is the one that ends up going plugged into the Wi-Fi card itself. So it's pretty easy and it's kind of hard to plug them in incorrectly because they kind of only go in one direction. But other than that, installation was pretty easy if you plug these cables first before you do anything else. So after having installed the Wi-Fi card to my system, as well as returning it to my desk, upon powering it on, I found that I did not have access to the internet. I was kind of surprised that it wasn't plug and play, but I later found out that you have to install the drivers in order for the Wi-Fi card to work. So what this means is you have to have internet access in order to install the Wi-Fi card. So if you're buying this Wi-Fi card and don't have internet access and want internet access, you kind of have to have internet prior to having the Wi-Fi card in your system. Well, anyways, after having plugged in my ethernet back to my computer and having access to the internet, I went to the TP-Link website and then installed the drivers, both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth drivers which didn't take long at all. And it was just pretty much a process of pressing okay, 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 until it was installed. And then I had to perform just a restart and then everything was working. Now I will say that I was surprised with the Wi-Fi speeds, mainly because I am in the basement and there is a floor in between me and the router as well as a couple walls and considering those factors i think it did pretty well considering all of that now for the bluetooth i did have a bluetooth speaker on hand and i was able to connect it to my computer and just go on youtube music and play some music really quickly and it sounded good and i didn't notice any delays of any sort or any weird sound artifacting I just think it it overall performed really well. It was kind of hard to tell if there was anything wrong. Now, in most cases, most people wouldn't really go the Wi-Fi card route unless they had a reason to. And a couple of those reasons being that they don't have Ethernet routed throughout their home or they just don't like having a cable running around their house and not having anywhere to kind of hide it or conceal it. So a Wi-Fi card really comes in handy then. Also. Um, the flexibility of being able to have your computer anywhere in the house and still have a reliable connection. That's another reason people get Wi-Fi cards as well as maybe the additional benefit of maybe Bluetooth, which if you really needed Bluetooth, you could buy a dedicated Bluetooth card. But honestly, why not get both for maybe $10 more? But overall with this card, I am pretty um, impressed with the performance mainly because I am in the basement and I think I only got 90 less download, but I think that's more of a Wi-Fi 6 issue than it is the Wi-Fi cards issue. Also, the fact that there is multiple obstructions in between me and the router, which I also think had a role to play. But for the most part, I think it just has more to do with the limits of Wi-Fi 6 and the distance it travels. And it just drops off in speed really quickly. But for the most part, I am pretty impressed with the Wi-Fi card as well as its Bluetooth capabilities because I was able to play um, music on my Bluetooth speaker without any issues and take it, I would say, about 20 feet from my computer and still be able to play music comfortably without any lag or noticeable delay. So overall, I think it was a good purchase. Like I said, I only recommend it for those that need it for either the flexibility to have your computer anywhere in your home or just the fact that you don't wanna run an ethernet cable around your house. So just for those two reasons, I really recommend it. But other than that, I would just stick to ethernet for the most part. It's just reliable and it performs a lot better. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.